And the current BPOs are, unfortunately, they're focused more on the cost and not the process. So we need to bring more functional depth in order for them to succeed in the future. Welcome to the GBS Masterminds podcast, the one and only platform for global business service leaders to share their experiences of building world-class shared service organizations. My name is Sashi Narathari, founder and CEO of HiRadius, and I'll be your host. Today, I'm delighted to host Suzanne, the first female to be named to IAOP's Hall of Fame, a professional sales services leader with a history of leading primary GBS across the US. In her 20 plus years of experience, Suzanne managed and led shared services for companies like UPS, ADM, and currently as the Chief GBS Officer at WPP. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sashi. It's such a privilege to be here. Suzanne, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career journey? I'd be happy to. GBS was not an available major when I went to college. I'm very lucky to have been able to learn about many disciplines that GBS has over the years. First, I led the payroll uh, organization there, and then we decided to that we really needed to focus more broadly on shared services. We had about 12,000 locations at HR Block. We hired about 80,000 people every year in November, December, and then we offboarded them around the 15th of April. Then I transitioned to a company called American Greetings, where we had really begun multifunctional shared services at Archer Daniels Midland. Oh, what a great learning experience that was. I was really able to understand the logistics of moving crops all around the world to keep our manufacturing you know, moving uh, despite things and issues like droughts. At ADM, we really focused on location strategy, automation, and stakeholder management. At UPS, Sashi, you know, to date, it was probably the most mature GBS that I've ever led. We had about 17,000 FTEs in the organization, uh, split between both captives and outsourced. And now at WPP, Prior to my arrival, there was really no GBS, but I've been amazingly fortunate because as WPP is the fifth Fortune 500 company that I've had the privilege of you know, calling my home, it's really been about learning different aspects of different types of businesses, right? It's been an amazing journey so far. And I was able to see through these different organizations how they see themselves as well as how they view their customers and clients, understanding that Every company is unique. All right. I guess it's very interesting background. You kind of seen the, the whole range from no GBS to a fairly mature GBS at UPS. So we're really looking forward to get your feedback on the six dead or alive questions. So maybe, Susan, I'll start with the first one. Based on your experience in leading shared services, do you think BPOs for outsourcing will be dead or alive in a decade from now? Sashi, they're going to be dead. <laughs> okay. They're going to be dead, but we really need them to be alive. The key here is that they need to transform, right? If their business model is going to be the same as it is today, they're going to be dead. For the last two decades, BPOs have not really fundamentally changed some of the, the ways that they approach you know, the outsourcing contracts. However, let me defend the BPOs, right? Most of the outsourcing failures are due to companies that have not well-documented their own processes. They don't understand where their baselines are. So when a GBS or shared services first takes over internal work, and they focus on simplifying, documenting, streamlining those processes, and then outsourcing, it works much better. But if the BPOs take over before those processes are streamlined, you really need to take the time to understand those baselines. And the current BPOs are, unfortunately, they're focused more on the cost and not the process. So we need to bring more functional depth in order for them to succeed in the future. All right, we'll go to the second one is on the service centers itself, could be whether BPOs or captives and so forth. In 10 years from now, will large centralized service centers be dead or alive, especially given the COVID effect of the last two years where there is so much about work from home, work from anywhere, kind of like an accelerant. 
what do you think would be the state for GBS or uh, captive centers or BPOs in, de- in a decade from now? Yes, gosh, I will tell you the global pandemic has fundamentally shifted how organizations think about themselves and about the future of work. For the large centralized service centers in the future, I think that those are the way that we thought about them before are going to be dead. If the global pandemic taught us anything, it's that we need to be flexible. We need to ensure that we have more hybrid models. So, you know, what we've seen is they need to be connected and understand that the team that they're working with to have a feeling of team. And so, you know, more team building, um, more training work, less, you know, sitting at a, at a desk and doing that transactional processing, those things people can do from home. And we certainly do not want to put all of our uh, eggs into one or two very large center baskets. Makes sense. I mean, in other words, I think what you're saying is if all you would expect people to do is show up at the office to work in a cubicle and mechanically do their work and go home that's not going to work out. You're going to lose the talent. You need a kind of best of both worlds where you're delivering culture, camaraderie, and so many other aspects of the workplace, and then give them the flexibility to execute the work as a combination, right? Beautifully paraphrased. Yes. Awesome. We'll go to the third dead or alive question. This is on a fairly famous technology called RPA, Robotic Process Automation. In the next 10 years, do you think RPA, and I'll be specific here in the current form, if you think about the RPA in the current form, it is mostly like an as is screen flow automation, right? Will that be dead or else? I think that RPA is fantastic. We need to keep focusing on the desire of IT wants to own everything that's automated. RPA really gave GBS and shared services an ability to bypass the IT organization, implement it lower than IT could otherwise deliver. But regardless of what system you're running, when you put RPA on a system, if the system does an update and upgrade, you know, whatever, and the cursor moves on the screen over one or two, you know, uh, pieces, then it kills your, your bot. And so what I really want to see is RPA companies evolve the tech. It's smart enough that, you know, if the, you know, the cursor needs to move over one, uh, a quarter of an inch that you know, because, you know, the upgrade, you know, made the field, uh, change, yeah. that would be outstanding. That would be revolutionary for RPA. That's really good feedback. So I think what you're saying is the either figure out a way to make IT department take ownership and motivate them or the technology itself has to evolve so that it's self-adaptable for these minor changes so it doesn't break and be brittle. That's exactly right. Awesome. All right. The next question, it's AI. And as you know, some of the biggest of the biggest companies are making huge bets. My question is more specifically with respect to GBS. AI and GBS in 10 years from now, will AI be dead or alive? Alive. (laughs) Gosh. You know, I think that GBS still needs to embrace AI uh, as a foundational part uh, of a value-added service for uh, its stakeholders. AI is absolutely continues to be our future, and we need to ensure that GBS matures enough to be able to implement AI. I think that most organizations don't really have a vision yet for how they can utilize it. And I think in another few years, AI is going to be table stakes for all GBS organizations. I'll give you an example. You know, when I was at UPS, we were doing some AI work on the claims process. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, packages are not well packaged, right? They are damaged. The process was arduous. Uh, lots of documentation, send me, you know, photos of the six sides of the package, and the AI would be smart enough to be able to say, oh, it was a coffee mug. Coffee mugs range in price from, you know, let's say $5 to, you know, $35. That's where AI can help to make things easier to, to do the work that now we don't have to go look it up and figure out how much it is. And that is a cool way to be able to use AI. And there's a lot more examples. I love the use case, Suzanne. So I think there are two things I'm thinking about when you told me that it just 
uh, lit up my eyes. Not only were you able to completely change the customer experience, but also given the scale of claims. And Sasha, I would tell you, that's really what GBS, the goal is, right? What you want to do is help your organization grow its top line, not just cost out on the bottom line. And that's where GBS really can help. You bet. Absolutely. All right. The fifth dead or alive question, Suzanne, this one is India as a service center location. In 10 years, given the consistent high wage increases in India, and then the growing inflation rate, which I know right now globally, everyone is having inflation, but India has historically had high inflation over the last decade. Will India as a top choice for service centers be dead or alive? India will still be alive. (laughs) We need to continuously look, right, as a GBS. So as we evolve and we want to, you know, not just throw out lower transactional work to India because of cost, we need to continue to find lower cost places, whether it's Asia, Africa, to be able to offset some of that inflation seen in India and other places. You know, the BPOs all have very large uh, centers in India, but they're also going to have to think about their evolutions as well. First of all, the the skill sets in India are fantastic, but like with everything else, it has to continue to evolve. All right. The last dead or alive question is the fate of GBS itself. I know that GBS has evolved over the years from you have seen like centralizing, formal shared service centers, now GBS. Where is this going? Do you think GBS itself in 10 years from now be dead or alive? I know that this is going to sound a little self-serving, but GBS is absolutely going to be alive. Longer term, Organizations want to optimize the cost very quickly and to catch up with companies. And so it's really a key factor for GBS to continue to evolve itself. We still struggle with stakeholder management. And I think that's going to be the key. Those organizations whose GBSs have successfully uh, worked with their stakeholders and are really connected to them, they are going to succeed. The root of most of the failures is really about bouncing GBS from one leader to another to another. Companies that see GBS as a strategic initiative and recognize the value They gain stronger employee engagement. They have better investor engagement. You know, cost out is really, it's not the goal. It's a result of the work that GBS does. And those organizations that value it automatically will have a lower cost. All right. So then on a closing note, you have been a very successful female senior GBS leader. What's your advice to men and women coming into the GBS organization? Yeah, wonderful question. It's really that upcoming leaders need to openly network with other, those of us that have, you know, been in the, in this, you know, for, for a while, right? We'd like to impart our wisdom on, you know, up and coming people. I've found many opportunities to do that. Finding leaders from multiple places, uh, seek advice from other people who have been there and done it. You know, those lessons from what we've already done. They'll be happy to share those war stories with you. I think the other thing that's really important is being able to listen to your stakeholders, build the relationships. And then, you know, I would say that the term out of sight, out of mind is a real thing. So you want to be visible. You want to be there. And so that's really the advice that I have to, you know, the up and coming leaders, the next generations uh, for GBS and shared services. That is really good wisdom, Suzanne. So for all those listeners to this podcast, especially given the the remote Zoom economy, as Suzanne said, out of sight, out of mind. To build your career, relationships are important. It's a good old way, right? Like go meet your peers, meet your leaders, your stakeholders, and those personal touch and relationships can go a long way. Suzanne, this has been a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much. It has been a delight to have you on the GBS Masterminds podcast today. Thank you, Sashi. It was my pleasure and my privilege uh, to be here. Thank you so much. That was the GBS Masterminds podcast. For more information, visit gbsmasterminds.com and make sure to search for GBS Masterminds in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else podcasts are found. 
click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And on behalf of the team here at High Radius, thanks for listening.